Hello, and thank you for joining us again. Today, we're gonna to talk about production management and configuration. So let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda. So we're gonna talk about work ticket class maintenance, work center, activity codes. So let's go ahead and get started with work ticket class maintenance. So let's take a look at production management setup and work ticket class maintenance. Every work ticket must have a work ticket class. Now we're doing make to stock work tickets here. That's what production management does. And so we currently only have one work ticket class and it's defined as a make to stock type work ticket class. As you can see, there's a checkbox here and it's grayed out, you can't uncheck it. However, you can create other work ticket classes. They all have to be make to stock work ticket classes, but you can create other ones and you can have different options defined for each of the work ticket classes. So some of the options going through here, track completed orders, auto step increments, extended tax can be defined only for step 000 or all steps, user defined info, talk about that on the user defined tab and how the material is sorted. It can be sorted by item code, find number, or entry order. We have our set to item code. Our default activity code and work center. We'll talk about those in a moment. Let's go to the invoicing tab. There's not a lot here that we can look at, but once again, we have this option to auto issue labor and auto issue materials and the shortage report option, the back flush options. Now, just because they're enabled in setup options doesn't mean that's what it's going to do. The work ticket class will actually define this, but if you don't enable it in the setup options, you cannot enable it over here. So it's really these options that matter when we're creating the work ticket. Let's look at the accounting tab. Not a lot of options going on here either. Most of these are grayed out. They're going to be used for future versions of production management when we're going to be doing make to order. But the one option I really want to have you focus your attention on is this one that says cost labor at standard. So like inventory or materials, when you create a work ticket, there's a budget for labor as well. And it's going to look at the activity code for that budgeted labor but you also can have the actual labor based on the activity code instead of the employee rate. So when you issue labor transactions to the work ticket, it can either be based on the employee rate or it can be based on a standard rate that you defined for the activity code. So if you do your own time and analysis and cost analysis for labor, maybe you wanna post that based on the activity code. So then it doesn't matter which employee is doing the activity, the cost is based on that specific activity as opposed to the specific employee. So that's the only option that we have available to us on this screen. Now we mentioned user defined and you can specify where user defined fields show up. In this test company, they've gone all out on the user defined fields just to show you all the different kinds of user defined fields you can have. So there's string fields, yes, no, numeric, uh, those kinds of things with input prompts and masks and those kinds of things. You can have a field validated and you can provide a validated list. Now this is completely separate from custom office user defined fields. And you can certainly do custom office user defined fields as well. On the overhead tab, you have an option to calculate overhead at a percent or an amount, and you specify the GL account numbers you can see here. Let's go ahead and take a look at work centers and activity code maintenance. So back in Sage 100 under production management setup, we're gonna take a look at work center maintenance. And as you can see, the setup of work centers is very simple. It's literally just a work center code and a description, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and close that. But activity codes define the work that is being performed in the work center. So I'll call up activity code 00001, and that's for the work center ACC, the accessories work center. 
and you can repeat the activity codes as long as they're in different work centers. So think of the work center as where the work is being performed and the activity code is what work is being performed. So as you can see here, we have a description of PAC keyboard and monitor as the description for this activity code. And you can give it a classification. It's either a general or it's an employee, it's a machine, it's an outside service if you want to. But notice the standard cost per hour. So once again, if you decide to post the cost based on the activity code instead of the employee, this is the rate that will be used for the actual cost. This is also the rate that's going to be used for the budgeted cost for labor. There's only one account we can do here, material scrap account. We have some options for overhead, fixed and variable. And scheduling tab is a future option. So remember when the work ticket is being created, you have the steps. Each step has a work center and activity code and a budgeted number of hours for that step, which will then calculate the labor budget and or the labor actual cost if that's what you want to do. So we've gone through work ticket class maintenance, work center activity code maintenance. Thank you for your time today. If you want to find us, you can find us on YouTube, LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com. Please check there for additional webinars that are coming up. And you can contact us at erp at nimsassociates.com or dial 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you for your attention.